hello and welcome to this presentation on education standards and the future of our profession. My name is Martin Stone and I'm the Managing Director of a college called Switch On Health. This college offers both short courses and full qualifications in nutrition, Western herbal medicine and naturopathy. We are running this session today because there have been some recent changes in the education standards in our profession and we would just like to explain a little bit about what this means for you. In today's session, you will learn the following. First of all, you will learn why there has never been better time to study natural therapies. You will also learn about the recent and current challenges to natural health education in Australia. You will learn how these changes will affect you, whether you are a healthcare consumer, a student, or somebody thinking about studying, or even if you are a current practitioner and you are considering upgrading your qualifications. Finally, you will learn how Switch On Health can help you to live a happier and healthier life. So, why natural health education? Well, the leading causes of death and disease in our society are strongly influenced by what you do and what you eat. And this is where natural therapies can help. We're seeing a lot of diseases increasing in today's society. Cardiovascular disease, obesity, type 2 diabetes, cancer, allergies, autoimmune conditions. All of these conditions are unfortunately on the rise. Mental health conditions are another one. Now modern medicine is fantastic, but unfortunately it is doing very little to prevent the current epidemic of chronic disease that we are seeing. And while these diseases may be managed by modern medicine, they can be prevented to a large extent and effectively treated or managed and the effects of them definitely decreased with natural therapies. The incidence of these diseases in our society is increasing. This means that the number of people coming to visit complementary medicine practitioners is also increasing. People are crying out for help. Everybody has got at least one health condition that they would like help with. Everybody's got something about their health that they would like to improve. I often say to people who are thinking about studying, your potential market is as big as there are people in Australia or even the world. So as more and more people turn towards complementary medicine, seeking answers that they're not getting from orthodox medicine, we need well-trained, well-qualified complementary medicine practitioners everywhere in Australia or even everywhere in the world. So that is why natural health education is so important, especially when people are coming to see complementary medicine practitioners before they have seen their GP. So we've just satisfied our first learning outcome for today, which is why there has never been a better time to study natural therapies. So to understand a bit about where we are today, natural health education, we need to have a little bit of a look at where we've come from. The 1980s, 1990s, early 2000s saw a pretty dramatic increase in both the acceptance and the interest in natural therapies. More and more people were turning to natural therapies seeking answers for their health care. This also meant that more people were attracted to studying natural therapies. Now they may have been studying just for their own interest because they wanted to help themselves or help their families, somebody with a health condition that was close to them, or they might have been wanting to study to gain a qualification so that they could then go out and have a career helping others. So this increase in natural therapies education, uh, this increase in the interest of natural therapies education, naturally led to an increase in both the size and the number of colleges that were offering qualifications in natural health. Back then, in the late 1990s and early 2000s, there was no formal regulation of our education. So how did you know that you were actually getting a good education and a decent qualification from a college? Well, there are a number of professional associations in our industry that regulate our profession. 
The largest of these associations is Australian, the Australian Traditional Medicine Society, or ATMS for short. So if you had, for example, two colleges that both wanted to uh, teach a diploma of nutrition, for example, those colleges would have to be accredited or approved by ATMS and having that ATMS accreditation would basically be a marker of quality on those qualifications. This meant that if you went to College A or College B, your diploma would be pretty similar. It didn't matter which place you studied because both of these colleges would have been accredited by the ATMS. So the complementary medicine industry was self-regulated. Now, the government didn't like this situation, and it wasn't just a complementary medicine industry. It was a whole lot of different trades and industries which had a very similar situation to natural therapies in that they had this self-regulation. Now, the government decided that this wasn't really acceptable because the problem that they saw was that if you had College A and College B offering a diploma, without government regulation, in theory, those diplomas might actually be very different to each other. So if you were an employer, for example, and somebody came to you with a diploma of XYZ, how would that employer know what you had actually studied? So what the government decided was that all qualifications had to be nationally standardised. They all had to be the same. So the idea was that College A and College B, if they were to offer a diploma, that diploma would be pretty well identical, regardless of whichever college you went to. So this was what the government introduced back in the early 2000s. So these new nationally standardised qualifications, um, they didn't consist of subjects like the old diplomas did. For example, with an old diploma, it followed a fairly logical sequence. They might have had a subject called Nutrition 1, and then a subject called Nutrition 2, and then a subject called Nutrition 3. And guess what? Before doing Nutrition 2, you would do Nutrition 1, because you would be building upon the previous knowledge that you had acquired. The government qualifications didn't contain these sorts of subjects. The government qualifications were made up of what were called units of competency. And a unit of competency was based on performing a task competently. So it didn't actually matter whether you did a really great job or a really poor job of performing that particular task. If you could perform that task, then you could be awarded that unit of competency. Unfortunately, unlike Nutrition 1 and Nutrition 2 and Nutrition 3, units of competency did not follow such a logical sequence. Units of competency were really designed for workplace training and assessment. So for example, if you were a mechanic and you learned your trade on the job, at some point somebody with a clipboard could come around and say, okay, uh, show me how you do an oil change. And if you did that oil change satisfactorily, you could then be awarded a unit of competency in how to change the oil on a car or whatever it was called. So this caused a few problems for the colleges because to be a nutritionist or a herbalist or a naturopath, you don't typically learn on the job. Now, some of our gaining of knowledge and experience does occur within a workplace setting, but that's not usually until you've completed at least two years of study. Think about it, you wouldn't want to go and see somebody who was being responsible for your health if they hadn't already completed a lot of study. So straight away, we had a problem with these qualifications that were regulated by the government. Perhaps even more importantly, these qualifications that were regulated by the government had zero regard for the existing standards that were set by associations such as ATMS. So whereas previously these professional associations had regulated what the colleges should be teaching in their diplomas, the new qualifications looked completely different to everything 
that our experienced practitioners and stakeholders in the industry thought a qualification should actually look like. This meant that students going to study one of these qualifications would not be studying anything that really resembled what had been taught for decades previously. So our complementary medicine qualifications first appeared in their regulated form, the government regulated form, in 2002 in what was called the health training package. Now for a number of years, colleges were probably either in denial or just not aware of the implications of this government regulation. So colleges pretty well continued what they always had been doing up until round about 2008 or 2009, at which point uh, auditing of these qualifications started to become more frequent from the government. And it was really only then that colleges sat up and really started to take notice of what they were required to do in order to adhere to these government regulations. Now, we've said that the units of competency did not resemble anything like the previous qualifications and they did not resemble subjects such as Nutrition 1, Nutrition 2 and Nutrition 3. So this meant that colleges were still delivering qualifications, had to somehow map their subjects, such as Nutrition 1 and Nutrition 2, to these units of competency, which did not resemble in any way what was being taught at the colleges. This is really akin to banging a square peg into a round hole. It was a very difficult fit and it simply did not work. Now, auditing of these qualifications became more frequent and more strict. Furthermore, to become a college that was going to issue these qualifications, you had to become what was called a registered training organisation or an RTO for short. The cost of becoming an RTO and of staying an RTO and of somehow trying to remain compliant to these qualifications that made no sense in the first place, that were then being audited by people who had no knowledge of natural health. All of this made delivering natural therapy qualifications very, very difficult for colleges. And you can guess what happened next. The introduction of our qualifications into the health training package represents, in our opinion, the single biggest threat to natural therapies education that we have ever faced. Now, in 2015, the government body that advised on these qualifications, the Complementary Health and Industry Skills Council, or CHISIC for short, as they were called, this body decided that our advanced diploma qualifications no longer belonged in the national training package. So to this, the decision was taken to remove the Advanced Diploma of Nutritional Medicine, the Advanced Diploma of Western Herbal Medicine, the Advanced Diploma of Naturopathy, and the Advanced Diploma of Homeopathy. This meant that colleges were unable to enrol any students into these qualifications beyond 2015, and colleges were not able to issue these qualifications to students beyond the end of 2018. The removal of the Advanced Diploma qualifications from their health training package meant that the only option left if you wanted to study in this field was to do a bachelor. So is a bachelor better? Well just having a bachelor does not necessarily mean there is an assurance of quality there. If it did, there would be no need for our associations such as ATMS to publish 20 page long documents on what is required for a qualification in natural therapies. Instead, they would just have a document with one word on it, and that one word would be bachelor. So it's quite possible to design a bachelor program that doesn't actually teach you what you need to know or prepare you to be a great practitioner. Now, if a bachelor is the only option you've got, that also presents a pretty significant barrier for many students. I know people that simply didn't have the confidence to actually embark on a bachelor program. They didn't feel they had that level of academic knowledge and it's also expensive. Furthermore, for the college, it is also an expensive process to be able to become a bachelor provider. In fact, it's very difficult to become a bachelor provider, which is why we see so few of them. 
Furthermore, if you wanted to be a lecturer in one of these bachelor programs, you are required to have done postgraduate study. Now, there are lots of fantastic practitioners out there, and some of these practitioners also make great teachers. But if they don't have postgraduate studies, postgraduate qualifications, they may not be able to teach and pass on their craft to our next generation of therapists. Not only that, but somebody might have done extensive postgraduate studies and be really great academically, but they might not really be a good practitioner and they might not even be a good teacher. So the teaching pool available to pass on this knowledge to our future generation of practitioners becomes decreased when you consider a bachelor being the only option. Now, another drawback to a bachelor is that there are limited places to study. You have to attend classes on campus and this has to be in a major city. There are currently six locations around Australia where you can study a bachelor. But if you happen to be in Canberra or Tasmania or the Northern Territory, tough luck. You will have to uproot your family and go and relocate if you want to study in this field. Perhaps the biggest drawback with a bachelor being the minimum standard is lack of choice. In 2003, there were approximately 43 colleges where you could go if you wanted to study naturopathy and or herbal medicine. Today, when we look at the number of colleges offering a Bachelor of Naturopathy, it is two. The number of colleges offering a Bachelor of Western Herbal Medicine, one. Number of colleges offering a Bachelor of Homeopathy, zero. When I say that, it actually makes my blood run cold because I fear for the future of our profession. And it is quite clear to me which direction we are going in if we trust our future to only two providers of bachelor programs, one of whom is overseas owned and neither of which are owned and operated by an Australian naturopath. I'm not knocking these colleges. I've worked for both of them, and I know many people that work for them. Dedicated and passionate teaching staff. And if anybody wants to study a bachelor, I applaud that move, and I also applaud postgraduate studies in education. But should we maintain that a bachelor should be the only standard for our, for our profession? Well, I think if we say that, we're placing ourselves in a very precarious position. So what next for natural therapies education? Well, we've got three options. Option number one is for a bachelor to become the new minimum standard. And we've already seen that this really puts us into a very risky position and eliminates the choice for a lot of people who wish to study. Option number two would be for the advanced diploma programs to be reintroduced into the national training package. This has actually been proposed. And all I can really say about this is that were that to happen, I sincerely hope that a much better job would be done this time around. Option three is what I call completing the circle, where industry regulates our qualifications and our education just as they always have done. The Australian Traditional Medicine Society has published their minimum education standards that all colleges must meet regardless of whether they are a bachelor or if their qualification is called something else. Switch on Health has been through a thorough accreditation process with ATMS and is currently the first and only college to be offering ATMS accredited qualifications since the removal of the advanced diplomas from the training package that are not non, that are not bachelor qualifications. So are our qualifications future proof? What does the future hold? There are three common questions we get asked. What if a bachelor does indeed become the new minimum standard? What if the advanced diploma programs are reintroduced into the training package? And thirdly, what if Switch on Health closes its doors? 
Well, let's have a look at those three questions. First of all, is it going to be compulsory to have a bachelor in the future? Well, for this to occur, one of two possible things would need to happen. One is that this would need to be mandated by the government via the form of statutory registration. Now, this is unlikely to happen in the near future, and industry would also have to be behind this. And ATMS, as the largest professional association in Australia for natural therapies, is opposed to statutory registration, and they are also opposed to a bachelor being the new minimum standard. What's more, there are currently thousands of successful practitioners in our industry who do not have a bachelor qualification, and this doesn't make them any less talented as practitioners. If a bachelor were to become the minimum, then either there would have to be a significant amount of time and other mechanisms in place that would enable people to be able to upgrade, or people that did not have a bachelor would continue to be recognised via what is called grandfathering. In other words, so long as you maintain your currency, so long as you maintain your insurance, so long as you maintain continuing professional development every year, your qualification would still be recognised whether you got it in the 1980s or whether you got it two years ago. What if the advanced diploma programmes are reintroduced into the training package? Well, Switch On Health's qualifications still meet ATMS standards, so it really is irrelevant whether these qualifications belong in the training package or not. ATMS still recognises our qualifications. We have met their standards. And lastly, the question we sometimes get asked is that because we're a new organisation, how do you know that Switch On Health won't close its doors? Well, here is our promise to you. We will continue to deliver your qualification even if you are the only student enrolled. That is my personal promise. We have seen that the other colleges simply cannot offer this. They are built on bricks and mortar, and with no disrespect to them whatsoever, they can't make that same guarantee that we can. And we can make this because of our delivery model. So why do we do this? We believe everyone should have the right to a happier and healthier life. Everyone should have the opportunity to study and learn about complementary medicine and how it can help themselves and their families to live a happier and healthier life. Everyone should have access to quality education wherever they happen to live. Everyone should have access to a natural health care practitioner no matter where they live. And everyone should be able to choose their preferred form of health care. So to summarise, Educational standards for our industry are important. And the best way for those standards to be upheld and regulated is via industry itself. Switch On Health meets those industry standards and we will continue to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending this session. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please do stick around and we'll be happy to chat or to answer them.